This week on WTHS, we take a look at how cheer did at their national competition. We learn about our mock trial club in a law and public safety class, and Ari takes a look at Riptide, our indoor drum line. Welcome back to this week's edition of WTHS News. I'm Morgan Robbins. And I'm Lucy Hill. This past week, our cheer team traveled to Orlando to compete in the national cheer competition. They faced many talented groups and placed fourth out of 14 other teams. KP talked to other cheerleaders about how it felt to cheer at a national competition. Two below. Here at THS, our very own cheerleaders won 4th out of 14 at the national competition. I spoke with a few of the cheerleaders on how it feels to win the competition and how it feels for the season to end. Daniel Fierro said the best moments for the cheerleaders were being together at nationals and throughout the season. I think that nationals was definitely the best moment. You know, um, it feels good when you're part of something bigger than yourself and especially when, you know, you're all you're with all your teammates um, and you know just being there and being happy and you know just having a good moment with everyone else I think that's the best part. Junior Lily Rose also tells me about how it feels to win at National and how it really was a memorable moment for her and her friends. I think just being with everybody and being able to go to Nationals and making it to Finals was super memorable and it was something super fun that will be in my heart forever. I spoke with three of the seniors, Daniel, Wanye, and Sarah Kay, about how it feels to win nationals. Um, I think it's like, it was a really good feeling, you know. It's something that the, the cheer team has never done before. Um, and I, I'm glad that I was able to be a part of it. Um, it's kind of like a bittersweet feeling, just the fact that I'm living that, uh, this year. But, you know, hopefully the team will win next year. It felt good just to know that we were the first ones to ever do it. It feels good. Um, as a senior, you know, you work really hard for what you're doing, like you're dedicated to a sport. So it feels good to have your last competition be a national competition because, like, the, you make it to the best of the best. And I don't know, I was just really excited to experience that. Also, Daniel and Wanye talk about some hard times they had as seniors on the cheer team. I think the hardest part will be, you know, living on my friends and, you know, like the memories that I make every day with them. Um, you know, it's kind of sad that I won't be able to see my juniors, my freshmen, and my sophomores anymore. But, you know, I wish them the best. The hardest part about the competition was that we had to actually perform twice. Lolly Rose, who has been on the cheer team since ninth grade, says she looks forward to being a senior next year and being a great leader. Being a senior and just taking up that leadership role that we all look forward to and just being able to close out my senior year with cheer. We are very proud of our cheerleaders for winning fourth in the nation, and we wish them the best luck next year. Good luck and go Wade. Congratulations to our varsity cheer team for all of their hard work. Hey, speaking of hard work, do you know I want to be a lawyer one day? Really? Well, you should join the mock trial club. The team will argue the fictional case that features a 19-year-old charged with capital murder in the death of a high school classmate at the end of their senior year, twice. Our THS mock trial team will compete February 28th through 29th in Jackson. Good luck and go Wave! The mock trial club sure does sound busy. Yeah, along with the law and public safety class here at THS. Maya has more information. Thanks, Lucy and Morgan. If you haven't heard, law and public safety is another CTE class we have at THS. Law and public safety is a class for students to know their rights and how to keep the public safe. Prosecutor sits closest to the jury, which usually sits right here. 
Ms. Bernard is the lawn public safety teacher at our school. She teaches students the basics of what goes on in our society daily. Also, she's a former 911 dispatcher. My mom had a big influence as well as my family who come from a history of law enforcement as well as military. So I've always wanted to serve my community and give back to the community and just make people aware of what goes on in the community and just keeping them safe. One student from Miss Bernard's class is Brody Grayson. Brody thinks the hardest thing about this class is note taking, but he suggests the easiest thing is remembering the Bill of Rights. He wants to be an attorney general in the future. What made me choose this career path was like seeing so many individuals on TV and how they help their neighborhoods and communities throughout the city and state. Another student in this class is Emily Paul. Emily believes the hardest thing in this class is remembering how a bill becomes a law, but she enjoys the projects the most from this class. If she wasn't taking this class, she would be a NATO surgeon. But for now, it would have to be a law enforcement officer. I want to be a law enforcement officer and make my community better. No matter what class you're looking forward to do, whether it's in law enforcement such as firemen, paramedics, uh, EMT, uh, dispatchers, uh, crime scene. Law and Public Safety will be a great class for you to join. And on my events, that's y'all in the studio. Speaking of safety, the weather's been pretty dangerous lately. I know. I'm hoping all this rain will clear up so we can get some spring weather. Same. Let's see what Abigail has for our weather. Thanks, Lucy and Morgan. Last week's weather was overcast and rainy, and this week's isn't going to be much different. With highs in the 60s and lows in the 40s, be sure to bring a coat. You may not only want a coat for the cold, but for the rain too. With 60% chance of rain on Tuesday and 50% or less for the rest of the week. To conclude the week's weather, there will be highs in the 60s and lows in the high 40s. With this week's weather, I'm Abigail Henderson, WTHS News. Seems like there's more rain coming up. I hope that doesn't affect any of the sports games. Ugh, me either. Sarah and Ava have more on sports. I'm Sarah. And I'm Ava. And welcome back to this week's edition of sports. They really showed out last Monday, and I'm sure they'll continue to honor the wave in future matches. I feel like I performed well, but I could have performed better if I uh, maybe tried harder. Well, I think I did good, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. You know who else honored the wave? Yeah, Coach Shoup, a ninth grade football coach, has been here for six years, but has since accepted a position as defensive coach at Amory. What was your favorite part about coaching here? Um, the Friday nights were, were always great. Um, I think just watching the kids play, working with them to um, get them ready for games, uh, and then helping those guys uh, achieve their dreams of getting to college. The, the ones we did were able to get there uh, and allow the ones that, that didn't get there to push themselves and, and become better people. We appreciate all that he did for this school, and although we are sad to see him go, we wish him luck on all of his future journeys. Speaking of journeys, our senior basketball players have been through quite an exciting one. Yeah, recently they were honored for their dedication. I feel like we've all have gotten better since last year, and our team chemistry is better, and we bond more. Basketball has taught me many leadership qualities that I need in being responsible for my work. Even though they'll be moving on, their legacies will live on in this school forever. Yeah. In other news, unfortunately, the baseball team, Meet the Wave, was canceled due to weather and field conditions. But you can cheer them on at their game this Saturday. Over the weekend, softball kicked off their season with a jamboree in Morville. They played two games, one against Punatuck and one against New Hope. That's all we have for sports this week. Back to you, Morgan and Lucy. Looks like the Golden Wave is heading towards success. It sure does. Hey, have you ever heard of Riptide? Yeah, it goes, lady running down to the river. No, not that one. I'm talking about the indoor drum line that we have. Oh yeah, I remember now, but I wish I knew more. Well, Ari asked a few of the members all about it. Thanks to Lucy and Morgan. The band program here has a lot of extra branches like Winter Guard, Jazz Band, and more. Riptide is one of these and is put on by band director, Mr. Knox. Riptide is an indoor percussion group made up of 8 to 12th graders who play snare, 
tenors, marimba, vibe, drum set, and more. This season's show revolves around a haunting theme. Basically, a haunted drum line is haunting a house and the family that's in the house moves in but they can't see them and they're being possessed. They are putting in a lot of work this season. They have practice on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and they are hoping that their hard work pays off. My goal is just to basically win as many competitions as possible and just to um, get more experience with playing. Probably to learn all my music and not hit as many uh, missed notes as I did last year. Uh, just to be a better player and be a better group in general. We wish Riptide good luck at all of their upcoming competitions. Back to you guys in the studio. Man, I want to be a part of that. That looks so fun. Yeah, me too. You know what else is fun? Meeting our WTHS staff. What's your favorite part about being in WTHS? I like to do a lot of writing for whenever there's a story that needs to have be scripted out or any lines that need to be written. And I also like to work a lot in Photoshop whenever the show needs a graphic for me to make. What do you want to do after high school? I want to get into something that will eventually down the line help me pursue writing for TV because I've got a lot of film and TV ideas and I want to work on some sort of story series. So what's your favorite part of being a part of WTHS? My favorite part is the editing. I like working behind the scenes. Um, and what is your favorite subject and why? My favorite subject is math because I like working with numbers. Our staff really shines on and off camera. You're right, they do a lot to help put the shows together each week. Hey, speaking of Shine, did you know that Night to Shine Prom was last week? Yeah, I heard about that. Night to Shine Prom is a prom night experience for special needs kids 14 years and older. It's put on by the Tim Tebow Foundation. THS students got the chance to be a part of this prom last week. Students got their makeup, hair, and nails done for the big night. Many Tupelo High School students along with their buddies participated in this event. I'm so excited to be in Charity Ball this weekend. Me too. What does your dress look like? You'll just have to come to find out. Okay, well, I guess for now we can go to a Charity Ball fashion show. Welcome to the WTHS <laughs> Fashion Show. I'm your host, Will Sandroni. And I'm the other host, Erin Hendricks. <laughs> As you can see, Sarah comes in. Oh, with some wow. flat, with some, <laughs> I forgot what this is called. Sarah feathers. is wearing feathers. <laughs> Feathers, uh, Sarah is wearing a Mississippi State sweatshirt with cotton made. It appears to be made by the great fashion Easter over there. I forgot her name, unfortunately. <laughs> She's also wearing a leg. It looks like it's off the coast of Honolulu. I think I said that wrong too, but whatever. <laughs> She's coming in with a fashion statement. She was wearing a pink bandana over her eyes, emphasizing that love is blind in the Valentine's Day season. She is also wearing lots of things on her head, <laughs> one of which is a jewel encrusted tiara. Yes, and the diamonds are 180 carats. 180 carats, all from, I believe that, I think that is from Dubai. I give you an eight. I, I give you a seven. Absolutely <laughs> superb. <laughs> Here's our next contestant from the design of Magnolia Boulevard. Wow, would you look at that intricate design. The it's amazing. The silk from the hood. Oh my God, it is absolutely spectacular. <laughs> oh my, everything on the inside. Her it's costume just of, malfunctioned. A plethora of different her, The items. offer next fell off. I think we have to detect points for that one. We probably should, but we have a blue expo market. A right ear. Here are our scores. Negative one, <laughs> negative three. Absolutely. Congratulations phenomenal. for your. Welcome our next contestant from the design of. Oh. Absolutely. A boa around her waist. Oh, Absolutely. It, it's a fashion incredible. statement. A it is a fashion statement. So Swedish fish out of, out of her crown. Wow. This is a truly. Wow. Um, is, usable crown. It I has love, multiple uses. I, I, love, I mean, I think it's I amazing. I love the pirate ascot. That's this style is, right she there. She is an absolute queen. Off-brand Queen Elsa. Whoa! <laughs> so we got a hidden talent up in yeah. here. On that note, on that note, you know what? I like it. I like it. I love it. I love it. I gave her a 9.5. I gave her a Absolutely. <laughs> incredible. 
and really know what to say I, about I, this. I, I do not at all. <laughs> it is absolutely amazing. The perfect score. Oh my. We're we're just we're just going to give it as many zeros as we can. <laughs> absolutely. I think that this is ten thousand. Ten thousand. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. that's ten thousand. Ten thousand. Beautiful. Well, that was. This is an interesting one. It has. Oh, never mind. Next up, we have Maya. She is here the, for the designer of Fleur de Cour from France. The blue cashmere on the, the what is it, North Face. The, it's absolutely exquisite. And the crown that the, is glowing. Oh my God, it's three different colors with the red and the green and the blue. Oh. Happy birthday. That's all for this week. Tune in next week for a recap on D-Nail. Have a great week.